Okay, it has arrived. This is our QNAP QSW1105 5T. It's a five port, 2.5 gigabit per second switch. I have upgraded the network cards in my Linux server and in my desktop PC. You can see me doing that in uh, the previous couple videos. We're going to unbox this, see what we get inside, check out a little bit of the build quality of this device, then we will plug it in, power it on, and we will test the speeds that we get with this. Okay, let's open this up, let's see what we got. Okay, the quick installation guide. This should be plug it in and then plug your ethernet cables into it. That should be the extent of the setup. So um, yeah, power it on, <laughs> plug your ethernet cables into it. It is literally this the quick setup guide. I appreciate that QNAP. About as simple as it gets. Okay, so we got some mounting feet for the bottom if we want rubber feet on the bottom. Wow, I'm impressed. It comes with some drywall mounting hardware. So if we want to mount this onto our wall, I don't think we're gonna do that. So it comes with a power cable. This one is 12 volts, one amp, so a 12 watt. So that's a it's kind of standard for most of these things. There are some lower powered ones. Okay, so this is the switch. It's much bigger than a regular unmanaged five port switch that I have. I have a couple TP-Link ones that are half of this size. Give me a second, I'll, I'll actually go get one and we'll compare size. Okay, we're back with the TP-Link one gigabit eight port switch. So this one's a TLSG 108. Okay, here's the model information. We've got eight gigabit ports, and we can see this. We can see here the size comparison. It is much smaller, and it's also definitely not near as thick, probably about, uh, this one's got a 20% increase, but we get double the speed and a little bit less ports. Okay, so that's the standard TP-Link one gigabit. Okay, so this is actually built pretty well. I was expecting a plastic front cover here, but this is metal. I am a little bit disappointed, well not disappointed, but the power connector is in the front. A little bit strange. Um, most of my switches the connectors in the back and this sits on the shelf and the power comes into the back here and my ethernet's going to the front. Uh, it's not really that big of a deal. I'm not in my network, my back network room where all my networking equipment is that often. So it looks like we have a power LED and probably a warning LED. I'll take a look, maybe our manual 
a quick installation guide tells us what it is. It does. So it's not a. It's a. Uh, so here it's a loop indicator. So we have a couple options: off and red flashing with the looping RJ45 port. Okay, so this will flash. It will flash with the port that is causing the loop. That's a awesome feature. And then we have the RJ45 link LED indicators. So we have green, amber, flashing without loop indicator and flashing with the loop indicator. So green is it's connected at two and a half gigabits. Amber is it's connected at less than two and a half gigabits. It doesn't indicate if it's 1000 megabits or 100 or 10, it's going to be less than 2.5 gigabits. And then we have flashing with the loop. So this indicator and this, if it's flashing at the same time, they will indicate a loop. And if it's flashing without it, it means that it is um, just transmitting, working as usual. And off means there's no link. Okay, so it's pretty simple. Uh, build quality is pretty sturdy. Okay, so let's get this uh, hooked up, powered on, and we will check our speeds. Okay, so this is my little networking setup. As you can see, I have quite a few TP-Link 8-port gigabit switches. I kind of just buy them as they go on sale. Some of them I can get for about $18 Canadian in the past, or as low as $23, $24. So I buy them when they're on sale. They work very well. I haven't had any problems achieving gigabit speeds with them. So you can see I just plugged in the QNAP there. Lights come on, and it settles on a green power light. Okay, so now I've plugged in my server and my PC. Both are getting a green light, meaning that the NIC cards that we installed both got two and a half gig. So I haven't done anything yet. We are gonna test out these speeds and see if they are any better than our initial speeds. They should be. The links, as you saw in the, in the video when I plugged it in, they showed up the server and my PC both showed up with a green LED, which indicates a 2.5 gigabit per second uh, switch speed. So we're just gonna copy the same file that we copied in the last video, which is this four gigabyte one, and we'll see what kind of speed we get. Hmm, okay, so not the increase that I was hoping for, but this might be a limitation of my actual server disk speed. So we'll take a look at that and we'll see what the disk speed limitation is of my Linux server. So before we check that out, let's test what the speed the other way is. It'll probably be about the same. About 150, once, yeah, about 130 megabits per second. Um, I was expecting closer to 200 or 240 megabytes per second. So we can take a look at this. We're getting 150 or so on average. So let's take a look at what, so if we get 150 megabytes, we'll multiply that by eight. We're only getting about 1.2 gigabits per second. We should be getting, we are hoping for about 312, 310 mega, megabytes per second transfer speeds is what we're looking for. So let me investigate 
on my Linux server and see what kind of disk speeds uh, it's capable of. It should be enough. It's a five disk RAID five. So it should be capable of providing these speeds. Let me find out. Okay, so let's take a look at the link speeds that we have in Windows on my machine. So we can see here, this is my network. The link speed here is 2,500 megabits per second. And we can check in our command prompt. Okay. WMIC, nick, get, name, and speed. So these are all the NIC adapters in my machine. These are the, this is the Intel and the Killer2500 for my motherboard. This USB one is a USB-C hub that I have. These are all disconnected. That's why they have such a large number. This is the one we're interested in. This is the two and a half gigabit and it is connected at 2500 megabits. Now let's, so I've logged into my Linux server. So let's take a look at what ETH tool says. Okay, so ETH tool is reporting a 2500 megabit speed now. So maybe it has renegotiated. Let's try this. So it is not, it is still getting the lower speed. So I'll just cancel that. Let's continue looking around. This. Let's just check the disk speed. We'll see what our disk speeds for our encrypted RAID. Okay, so pretty good speeds, well capable of providing the full two and a half gig per second read speeds. So I have a feeling that we're still actually only connected at 1000 base T. So I'm gonna try, I'm just gonna try rebooting. See if that helps this at all. Maybe it's the answer. If not, then we will continue our journey on troubleshooting on why it's going slow. So we'll let it reboot and we'll be back. So I think we're getting somewhere with the speeds. After my last ranting, I realized something and I'll show you in a video here what I realized. Yes, the NIC is plugged into a Gen 1 PCI slot. Being plugged into the Gen 1 PCI slot, it looks like it cost about 40 megabytes a second. So now that I'm recording, it's a little bit less, but it does hover around 195, 200 when I'm not recording. So recording may be causing an issue with the speed that I'm able to get directly on here. So I'm gonna pause recording and then I'll unpause it when it goes back up. So I'm gonna copy a file to a drive that isn't being used for recording. So let's test this out. So we can see there 220, it starts out and then it kind of lowers itself off. 
and then settles about 190 or so. It's a little bit up and down. This is much better than the 154, 149 that I was getting before. I'd still like to see it over 200 consistently, but I'm going to see if installing Ubuntu 20 or 21 will help improve these speeds because it did previously it gave me about an additional 15 megabits or so so let me do that and we will try another transfer and see what we can achieve okay so here we go so i've installed a ubuntu 20.04 ssd into my server i've dropped a share on there let's upload a file to it and see what the result is and look at that amazing so 280 megabytes a second this is exactly what i was hoping for so it looks like the issues that i had was a combination of old pc or workstation hardware with the pci gen 1 speeds as well as an older version of SMB or Ubuntu. So it looks like in the next couple of weeks I will be upgrading my version of Ubuntu server to probably go with version 21. It's the latest version and it has a lot of the features and hopefully I'll be able to get all the customizations passed through onto in, into this new OS because these are the speeds that I've been looking forward to. This concludes my network speed upgrade journey. It was a difficult one for the past couple of days doing all of this. And I think I've settled the issue. You could probably find a video of me installing and configuring a new Ubuntu 21.04 server. And hopefully it will serve me well as this Ubuntu 16.04 has for the past five years. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.